Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this Beast of a Router by TP-Link. This is the Archer BE900. It has a crazy fast speed rating of BE24000. It does support Wi-Fi 7. It has 12 internal antennas. It has 2 10 gig ports and 4 2 and a half gig ports. I will be fully doing speed tests and range tests using my following Wi-Fi devices. And if you guys have a Pixel 8 or a Pixel 8 Pro, just know that at least as of now, even though this thing has Wi-Fi 7, I'm not able to get MLO to work with this thing, so it can't connect to more than one band at the same time. So essentially, a Pixel 8 or a Pixel 8 Pro is more similar to a Wi-Fi 6C device like the iPhone 15 Pro Max. All right, with that out of the way, let's unbox this thing and go from there. So I really like the packaging that TP-Link has been doing lately. I have just unboxed the BE95, which is pretty much one of the best mesh systems out there at least the best one that TP-Link makes and TP-Link makes some really good ones wow this is huge oh my goodness so this thing is really large it, it is very nicely packaged I am hiding the information up on top it gives you some information on how to connect and um, the serial number and everything but in terms of ports so let me put it right here so we have four 2.5 gigabit ports. We have two 10 gig ports. It looks like this 10 gig can be used or you can use the SFP plus port right here, which is for fiber optic. We have a one gig LAN right here. We have a USB 2.0, 3.0 factory reset um, off and on and the power plug right there. And if you guys want to get a frame of reference, this is the Deco BE95. So it's actually taller and obviously sidewise it's much larger um, than the BE95 and that is a top-down view so it's definitely a lot bigger uh, than the mesh system so I'm expecting great things from that so we have the power plug right here it is 100 to 240 volts output is 75 watts so that's it right there we have the Ethernet cable right here and we have a factory reset tool, which also kind of looks like a SIM card remover for a phone. Uh, and then we have some instructions. These things are pretty easy to set up usually. Um, yeah, using the same Tether app for TP-Link. So TP-Link for the individual routers, they use the Tether app. And for the mesh systems, they use the Deco app. And there it is. So it's been about a week since I've unboxed this thing. I have been using it as my main router and so far so good. I have around 80 or so devices and you know, a bunch of smart home devices, cameras, uh, smart switches, things like that. Uh, laptops, tablets, phones, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So no drop, something like that, which is really good. I did set it up using the Tether app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And I'll go over the Tether app, what it looks like in a little bit. So. In that week or so, I had a chance to do all my speed test range tests, have all those numbers here, and I did recently plug it in, so it's not connected to my ONT, so it's actually not doing anything right now. It is going to emit the Wi-Fi signal, which is kind of going to interfere with my router that I'm running right now, but I will temporarily turn it on, just so you guys could see. So this part of it, you can actually, uh, it comes with images. Um, you can it, it could oscillate through the different images you can even within the app you can actually make your own like draw one with your finger and then basically make your own and then have that be there or oscillate through some you can even put the time here and below it is, is actually it shows you the day and time uh, and then there's a few other things it could show you once you scroll through it once it's actually on so when it goes on it's gonna be a big exclamation mark which is basically saying like hey I'm not connected and obviously that's not the case right now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> obviously that is the case right now. That's why it's not connected. So you see the exclamation mark right here. So, and then this is the menu. So you could pretty much scroll. It's not smooth like a cell phone, but it does the job. And again, uh, you can also disable that as well, but it's kind of like a nice to have and the date and time stamp are probably off as well because again, it's not connected to the internet. Okay, so let's jump straight in with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, no matter how fast your router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by those internet speeds. Unless, of course, the router itself can't go that fast, which in this case, this one certainly can, because this has a 10 gig port 
Now my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download. And when I do a speed test via ethernet, a device connected to this, I do get those full five gig speeds. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. Definitely slower. When we look at the results, we could see that the Wi-Fi 7 is still incredibly fast, especially for the download, not quite as fast for the upload. And this is a relative thing. So when I say, you know, 1.7 gigabits per second on a phone is not as fast, I'm not saying it's not fast. I'm just saying, relatively speaking, it's not quite as fast because 1.7 is really ridiculously fast, especially on a phone. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E devices, not quite as fast, <laughs> still blazing fast, but not quite as fast as the Wi-Fi 7 devices. So what I like to do is I do a local speed test server where I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and this isolates the router. So basically I get the true performance that way. Whereas with internet speed test, I have to go through my ISP, my internet service provider, and then I also have to rely on the public speed test server and sometimes the servers get busy so the speeds aren't quite as good at certain times with certain servers. So this way I basically isolate the router and looking at these speeds there is an overall improvement uh, and the biggest difference was the upload section for the Wi-Fi 7 device. Next we get into range test. Now range will vary vastly by location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, things like that typically hurt your range. So essentially more obstructions equals less range. The more of an open area area you're in, the better the range will typically be. Now in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, got some really good speeds. There's definitely a drop in the upload section, not quite of a drop in the download, but definitely a drop in the upload, but still like ridiculously fast speeds. At 50 feet, I'm outside my place, still getting some really solid numbers. I mean, these are some very, very fast speeds. And at 100 feet, the biggest surprise here is the upload, I was expecting it to drop, so right around here, maybe you could have done a little bit better for the upload, still getting some phenomenal speeds at 100 feet away, uh, but just compared to the download, especially the Wi-Fi 7, I was genuinely surprised how Wi-Fi 7 download speeds were this fast. So overall, very good range, especially in the download sections. Now, we get into the Tether app. So with the Tether app, again, available both on iOS and on Android, you you set this thing up and it tells you what you need to do so it tells you like oh disconnect your modem or your ONT plug this in plug that in do this do that so step by step it shows you uh, what to do and then you get it set up uh, and then you get your options so you can make your SSID which is your Wi-Fi name you can have two SSIDs for your main SSID so basically three of the bands, the 2.4, the five gigas, and the other five gigas all combine into one SSID, and then the six gigas combines into a different SSID. Uh, you can also separate out the 2.45 and then the other five, so you could actually have four main SSIDs if you want to do that. Uh, not something I particularly recommend, but it is an option. Uh, for the guest Wi-Fi, uh, you could set that up. You could set up an Internet of Things Wi-Fi for smart home devices. Uh, so that's really nice. You could do that. And then you also get uh, parental controls with this thing. So the parental controls give you a decent number of options. You can schedule some timing. You can filter out some content. Now, they also have more advanced parental controls with more time restrictions, but that does require a separate subscription, just as a heads up. Uh, but in terms of the options, there's a lot of options there. There's VPN options. You can even run this router in access point mode if you wanted to. Uh, not something I particularly recommend for something this fast, uh, but it is an option. It also has an easy mesh option, which means you can get another one of these, connect them together, and create a mesh system out of it. Uh, and then there's a, also a web interface that also gives you a decent number of options, most of the options being the same as within the Tether app. Uh, but decent number of options online as well. If you just go to the default gateway, which I believe for this one was 192.168.0.1. Uh, I believe that's what it was for this one. But basically, if you went to the default gateway on a browser that's hooked up to this uh, network, it should be able to access it. It'll last for your password. You should be good to go. So with all that said, is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. I mean, this thing honestly is... It's pretty beasty. It's very fast 
very powerful. It has a lot of ports. It has two 10 gig ports. So in my case, because I have 10 gig switches, I can't actually keep a full 10 gig LAN uh, out of this thing because some routers and some mesh systems, when you go in, it has a really fast port, but as soon as you come out, it actually slows down the speeds. Where this, whereas with this one, it does have two 10 gig ports, so I could keep those speeds going, uh, which is really, really good. Um, it also has a USB port, so if you want to share your hard drive and stuff, uh, an external hard drive, you could do that. Uh, don't expect crazy fast speeds from that, but there's a lot of options, and it also has Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 7 being the latest standard right now, uh, very fast, so you're kind of future-proofing by getting this thing, or if you have faster internet speeds, very good. You can also get this thing if your internet speeds aren't quite as fast, but, you know, if you're planning on increasing it or whatever, you could do that. Um, uh, but there's also other alternatives, like there's uh, cheaper Archer routers that do very well uh, for not quite as fast internet speeds as well. So really, I mean, this thing is an absolute beast of a router. It just depends, like, do you need something this powerful or not? Now, with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section as well. Do you guys like this thing? Do you guys have it? Are you considering getting one? And if so, how fast are your internet speeds? With that said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.